We are in section 6.5. In this section, we are not learning anything new. However, we are taking all of the things that we learned in previous sections of chapter 6 and we're lumping them all together. On your last test, I told, or last quiz, I told you exactly what to do where. In other words, I said factor using the GCF, factor the easy trinomial, factor the hard trinomial, factor the squares. But in this particular quiz and on your test, all it's going to say is factor. So you'll have to know what to do when. So there's a strategy to go by when you're deciding what type of factoring goes with which problem. And your strategy starts like this. The first thing you're going to do every time is look for a greatest common factor. Once you get the greatest common factor, if it has one, you're going to count the number of terms. If it has two terms, you can try squares. If it has three terms, that means it's a trinomial. It can be an easy trinomial from section 6.2, a hard trinomial from section 6.3, or a perfect square trinomial from section 6.4. If it has four terms, you're going to work it by grouping. Always check to make sure that it can't be factored further. So on this slide, I'm asking you to factor 3x squared minus 27x. My directions in my strategy say to factor out a greatest common factor first. And I recognize this to have a 3 in common and an x in common. So I'm going to take out a 3 and an x. I took out the 3 and I took out 1x, so that left me with an x left over. Minus 3 times 9 gives me 27 and I took out the only x. And that is my answer. A lot of people try to factor that again, but you do not have the difference of squares. 9 may be a square in this case, but that's a plain x. So you can't factor it if, as squares if both terms are not squared. The second one on this slide is 4x cubed minus 100x. I recognize that they both have a 4 in common, and they both have an x, and the smallest x is just x. So I can take an x, a 4x out. So I take the 4 out, and I take the x out, so that leaves me with x squared minus 25. x squared is a square, and 5, 25 is a square, so this is going to factor one more time. So I would have a 4x, open my parentheses, and I'd have an x minus 5 and an x plus 5. Let's try some other ones. My next problem says 16x squared minus 4xy minus 12y squared. First, I'm going to look to see if it has a greatest common factor. I know that it does not have a number in common because the first term does not have a number. I know it does not have an x in common because the last term does not have an x. I see that all terms do not have a y, so that means that this one does not have a GCF. It does have x squareds on the front and y squareds on the back, so that means x times x on the front and y times y on the back. This is an easy trinomial because it starts with a 1x squared. Reading it backwards, I'm looking for the factors of 12 that subtract to give me 4. So that would be 6 times 2. I'm combining a 6 and a 2 in order to get a minus 4. So that means the 6 needs to be negative and the 2 positive. And that would be your answer. x minus 6y, x plus 2y. The next problem is 16a cubed b squared minus 4ab squared. I see off the top of the step one, off from the front, I see that this has a GCF. I see they both have a 4. I see they both have an a, and they both have a b squared. So when I take that out, it leaves me with 4a squared, no b's. And the second part, I'm taking everything out. I take out the 4, the a, the b squared. But something has to hold that position, and that's going to be a 1. Now, 4ab squared is my greatest common factor. I'm just going to bring that down. 
But from the second part, I noticed that 4 is a square, a squared is a square, and 1 is a square. So I can open this up as the difference of squares, and this would be 2a and 2a on the front, and 1 and 1 on the back. 1's positive and 1's negative, and that's how that one would factor.